Do you think of our universe as just one giant computation? I, I would even kind of say quantum computing is overhyped in that there's a few things quantum computing is going to be good at. One is breaking crypto systems, but we know how to make new crypto systems. What it's really good at is modeling other quantum systems. So for studying nanotechnology, it's going to be powerful. Um, but quantum computing is not going to disrupt and change everything. But the reason I say that is this interesting group of strange people who helped invent quantum computing before it was clear anything was there. One of the main reasons they did it wasn't to make a computer that can break a crypto system. It was, you could turn this backwards. You could be surprised quantum mechanics can compute, or you can go in the opposite direction and say, if quantum mechanics can compute, um, that's a description of nature. So physics is written in terms of partial differential equations. That is an information technology from uh, two centuries ago. The, the equations of physics are not, this will sound very strange to say, but the equations of physics, Schrodinger's equations and Maxwell's equations and all of them, are not fundamental. They're a representation of physics that was accessible to us in the era of having a pencil and a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a fundamental problem, which is if you make a dot on a piece of paper, in, in traditional physics theory, there's informi infinite information in that dot. A point has infinite information um, that can't be true because it, in, information is is um, a fundamental resource that's connected to energy. And in fact, it, um, one of my favorite questions you can ask a cosmologist to trip them up is ask, is information a conserved quantity in the universe? Was all the information created in the Big Bang or can the universe create information? And I, I've, I've yet to meet a con cosmologist who doesn't, stutter and not clearly know how to handle that existential question. But sort of putting that to a side, in physics theory, the way it's taught, information comes late. You know, you're taught about X, a variable, which can contain infinite information, but physically that's unrealistic. And so physics theories have to find ways to cut that off. So instead, uh, there are a number of people who start with a theory of the universe should start with information and computation mm -hmm. as the fundamental resources that explain nature. And then you build up from that to something that looks like throwing baseballs down a slope. And so in that sense, the work on physics and computation has many applications that we've been talking about, but more deeply... It's really getting at new ways to think about how the universe works. And there are a number of things that are hard to do in traditional physics that make more sense when you start with information and computation as the root of physical theory. So information and computation being the, 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 the real fundamental thing in the universe. Right, that information is a resource. You can't have, you can't have infinite information in finite space. Mm -hmm. Information propagates and interacts and from there, you erect the scaffolding of physics. Now, it happens, the words I just said look a lot like quantum field theories. But there's an interesting way where instead of starting with different differential equations to get to quantum field theories, and quantum the field theories, you get to quantization. Um, if, you, if, if you start from computation and information, you begin sort of quantized and you, you build up from there. And so that's the sense in which uh, uh, absolutely I think about the universe as a computer. The easy way to understand that is uh, just uh, almost anything is computationally universal, but the deep way is it, it's a real fundamental way to understand how the universe works.